What's going on guys? It's Jimmy here with your second stimulus check update and we have breaking news regarding the stimulus bill and a vote of, yeah, actually voting on this stimulus package bill to get it passed with stimulus checks in there. I'm going to give you all the details of what we know and what we expect and I have another state that is passing and renewing their state rental assistance program, which means thousands of dollars in your pocket if you qualify for that. I'm gonna give you all the details of it in this video. Also, I just wanna say thank you very much to each and every one of you for watching and for tuning into our show. I had my wife and my son on the last video before this at the end of that. We wanna wish you guys happy holiday, Merry Christmas, and when this bill passes, we will be walking you through how to claim the different buckets of money as well as what we expect with the January and February stimulus packages that both Joe Biden and Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell have said will be coming. Personally, I'm just very happy that it looks like they're actually gonna pass another stimulus package after all this time, finally get something out to the people, and then we can work on the next one, because it doesn't look, I mean, this package is gonna be like a trillion dollars, but there's definitely more that needs to be done. All right, let's jump right into it. Okay, first, let's talk to Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer regarding what's going on with the vote, when do, do we expect this, and also what is holding the package up. Chuck Schumer actually might become the Senate Majority Leader if the Democrats win both of the Senate seats in Georgia, which they are currently ahead in the polls. That vote will happen on January 5th. I will be updating you on that as we get closer. Thankfully. The Republican leadership recently accepted the bipartisan Gang of Eight's framework as the basis for negotiations for an emergency bill, which Speaker Pelosi and I had suggested, unlocking the current round of talks. Even now, at the end of this painstaking process, there have been some final hurdles. Crafting a $1 trillion relief package over the matter of a few days was always going to have its difficulties, but we are running out of time. After passing yet another continuing resolution yesterday evening, we have until Sunday at midnight to secure a final agreement, draft the legislation, and move it through both chambers of Congress with alacrity. I agree with the Republican leader on this. We need to deliver an outcome and deliver it quickly. Now we continue to make progress. I believe there is good faith from all four corners of congressional leadership to finalize an agreement very soon. Even though there are several issues that haven't been closed out yet, we continue to make good progress on all issues but one. The number one outstanding issue is a proposal by the Republican senator from Pennsylvania. This proposal is a new entrant. It hadn't been an important feature of our negotiations over the past few weeks. Only in the past few days have Senator Toomey and Senator McConnell introduced this specific provision and made it clear they feel strongly about it. Senator Toomey's new proposal would potentially prohibit the Treasury and the Fed from setting up new emergency lending facilities moving forward, greatly reducing their ability to respond to economic crises. Again, this is something that only materialized in the past few days and would leave the Treasury and the Fed with less authority than it had even prior to the pandemic. Quite simply, Sen Senator Toomey's proposal would do more than just prevent the next Treasury Secretary and Fed Chair from using the emergency lending programs that saved our economy and stabilized markets back in March and April. It could, prevent, it could potentially prevent them from setting up new facility, new facility, could, it could potentially prevent them from setting up new facilities that look or even smell like those programs moving forward. Democrats do not agree with it. Economists from across the political spectrum warned that Senator Toomey's legislation would cripple our government's ability to respond to a deteriorating economy. The chair of the Federal Reserve, Jay Powell, hardly a flaming liberal, is likewise strongly opposed to the Toomey provision. Senator Toomey's proposal goes way beyond what Leader McConnell proposed in his Heals Act. This seems to be the last major issue that they're trying to figure out 
with the vote now scheduled, this last major issue is basically, as you heard him say, Democrats and economists are crying a foul because they're basically trying to limit or stop programs that President Donald Trump had accessible to him during this crisis, both from the Fed and the Treasury, basically access to all the stimulus money and and money that they can pump into the stock market and all these different programs that President Trump had access to. They're basically trying to say that they don't want Joe Biden to have access to this for any years or months going forward to help out the economy. Even though President Trump had access to it, Mitch McConnell and Senator Toomey are trying to get rid of these programs going forward so that Joe Biden is basically handicapped with his administration yeah, this is, again, I don't normally pick sides, but I don't agree with this at all. We shouldn't be handicapping our own economy and our own people going forward for what we don't even know what's going to happen in the future. I mean, we know right now things aren't doing very well, so we shouldn't be handicapping our own economy going forward just because we're switching political parties. You guys can let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. With that being said, about the stimulus package bill and the vote, Representative AOC, also known as AOC, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, I know her, her name is a mouthful, she basically says that leadership has told representatives and senators that they're going to deliver the bill to them 30 minutes before they have to vote. So they're going to deliver this, the final, because again, we haven't even seen the bill yet at this point. Literally, they're supposed to vote on this tomorrow, which I'll get here in a second. But basically, they're going to have a 600-plus page bill. They're going to give it out to the representatives and the senators 30 minutes before the vote. So they're expected to read through 600 pages and then vote on it 30 minutes later. This is coming from AOC. It's almost like Congress is trying to pull a fast one over on the American people and the economy. Like, here's this bill. We know you don't have time to read it all, but you need to vote right now on it. Yeah, that's 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 what AOC says is going to happen. We'll see what, what is going to happen, but they really are pushing this down to the wire. The government is going to shut down tomorrow at midnight if they don't pass this bill, because in this bill is basically an omnibus, multiple bills in there. There's the government shutdown bill that you know has a con it basically funds the government going forward. It's not a continuing resolution. It's an actual bill that funds us until next year where they have to do this all over again. So there's the continuing resolution government shutdown bill. Then there's the stimulus package bill in there. And they have set a vote on this now for tomorrow. As you can see on Steny Hoyer's The House Majority Leader's page from the government page, that they have set a vote now in the House for tomorrow, although time is pending on this. And this is the only vote they expect to vote on tomorrow, which, which again, this is a, basically it. I mean, this is, this is everything they're working on here. The stimulus package and the government funding bill all in one, which are going to get delivered to them 30 minutes before, and they're going to have to vote on it immediately. Now, what do I expect to be in this stimulus package? I personally think there's going to be stimulus checks of $600 in there. We have heard six to $700. The $700 might come into play with a special stipulation that low-income families might get an extra $100 on their stimulus check. Okay, I don't expect it to be $1,200, although we have seen a big push for that. I don't expect to see the $1,200 in this bill. I expect them to be $600, which is better than nothing because a week ago they were zero. Okay, So if you're a family of just one, you're just a single person, $600. If you're a family of two, $1,200. I expect $600 checks for uh, children about dependents, adult dependents, and possibly stretching that out further. We honestly do not know those details yet. So what we expect is what they've been telling us, $600. Per person. So if you're a family of two, $1,200. If you're a family of four, $2,400. If you're a family of six, $3,600. Okay. We also expect a $300 per week unemployment extension for at least three months going forward. Retroactive is really up in the air. I honestly think there might not be any retroactive portion to the unemployment at this point. Again, we don't know all the details. We have to go with just what the senators and the representatives have told us and what is the most likely scenario. And I expect a $300 per week unemployment extension for three months, which will get us uh, into March, possibly to April 1st. 
And honestly, I mean, I know longer would be better, but I'm not too concerned about that because I think that when they pass the next stimulus packages in January and February, they can basically just extend that again there also. Also, we're expecting $25 billion for rent assistance, which is money that you will probably be able to claim directly from the federal government to help you pay your rent. So you might be able to get an extra $1,000 for rental assistance. Again, when this bill passes, I will be walking you through how to get these different buckets of money. There's also going to be a PPP extension. So if you have a small business, anybody in your family owns a small business or a side business, sometimes if you drive for Uber, if you drive for DoorDash, if you sell products on Amazon, even if you don't have an LLC, and even if you don't have employees, you yourself are considered an employee, so you might be able to claim that money. And a lot of people got a lot of money for PPP for their small business, tens of thousands of dollars to keep their business going. You have to spend the majority of that on the paychecks of your employees, but again, you are counted as the first employee. So if you have a side business where you drive for DoorDash or um, Uber or you sell for Amazon, you have no employees, you could potentially be able to claim one of those buckets of money for yourself for your small business. Again, rent assistance, PPP money, possible student loan forbearance, mortgage eviction uh, extension. We're going to have all sorts of different things in this when they pass it, which could be as early as tomorrow. Now, here's the thing is the government will shut down. They've only extended it for two days, literally to Sunday night at midnight. So the government will shut down tomorrow if they don't pass an extension or pass this bill. I don't even I can't even say extension because there's basically no more extensions. They have to pass this bill, which they're going to be presented 30 minutes ahead of time. And there's going to be a stimulus package in there with all those details that I said are most likely the likeliest scenario. Again, something could be changed. There's uh, provisions in there that we just don't know about, like the money for dependents or child. Um, if you owe child support, all those different things. We just do not know the details of that yet because they haven't even released this to the own representatives and own senators of their party. So it's just been an absolutely crazy, crazy negotiation yeah if you heard my wife <laughs> a, a special kind of show that is just i almost don't it's just like they really put it down to the wire here man they're really just i don't even know how they can cut it this close they, they pass a two-day extension and then it's like is that even enough time to get things done like what are they it's almost like they have no idea what they're doing with that being said, let me give you another state that is reopening and passing rent assistance right now, and this is a big one. New York State Homes and Community Renewal Commissioner Ruth Ann, I'm not even going to try to say her last name, Vizinakaris, today announced that their rent relief program will be reopened for application with expanded eligibility criteria in an effort to serve New Yorkers who may have not had the opportunity to initially apply and for those that have, who have been previously ineligible. Basically, there's $60 million now available for New York rent assistance, which is absolutely amazing. As you can see here, the HCR will accept applications from households starting at 9 a.m., yesterday on December 18th through Monday, February 1st, 2021. The HCR is the New York State Homes and Community Renewal uh, Program. So make sure to look this information up if you're from New York, New York HCR Homes and Community Renewal, or just type in New York Rent Assistance Program. Again, these rent assistance programs will pay thousands of dollars for you for rent assistance. And that's why rent assistance is one of the most important part of help in this pandemic. I'm trying to bring you guys new programs like this every day. And there there is money in the federal stimulus package for direct rent assistance to you guys also, which I will be helping you claim. So make sure you're subscribed with the bell icon on. We have new videos coming out at 10 a.m., 3 p.m. and 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Click the bell icon if you want to get notifications when we go live. I will keep you updated. Tomorrow is going to be a big day. Make sure you tune in at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. You can click this top video here to watch my newest stimulus check video next. And this video teaches you how to start your own business selling products on Amazon FBA, where I teach people how to do it. And I've had dozens of people replace their 9 to 5 income selling products on Amazon. Click on one of those videos to watch them next. Thanks, guys, and I will see you.
in the next video.